Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O R D hyphen Oracle.com. That's Ord hyphen Oracle.com. He has a great newsletter. Get over there, check it out. Tim Wood, what's going on, brother? Well, we got kind of a dead market here. This is uh, the week before option expiration week. Okay. And uh, a lot of times you get kind of a whipsaw market. So I'm thinking, uh, we can pull up chart one. This is kind of a short term view. What I think may happen before the week is out. Okay. I have um, chart one up. Yep. Yeah. Well, anyhow, that's, this is the SPY. And last Wednesday, which is December 30 or uh, January 31st, we had a kind of a selling climax. If you notice that volume on that day was about 100% approximately 100% greater than the previous days before it. Yes, it was 126 million, yep. Yeah, 26 million, or no. It was 126 uh, million versus 58 million, right. All right. Um, yeah, well, this is, right, this is, well, we got 26 million now on that chart, but last last Wednesday we had, looks like, over 100 million shares. Yeah, no, no, Tim, million. Tim, Tim, I said 126 million. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. It Didn't was it was, it, it was double. It was double exactly. It was actually more than double a little. Yeah, it was double. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyhow, so anyhow, you get volume that high right off the bat. Normally, if the volume goes up gradually, if you're coming down, that's usually kind of a death signal that the market will continue. But when everybody goes out the door at the same time, normally that just stops the rally. And uh, that's kind of an exhaustion move to the downside. So anyhow, we had a kind of a exhaustion, or we had a selling climax, yeah. And then we ran back up. And normally, a selling climax, a lot of them are tested. There's, okay. This one doesn't have to be. I've, I've got play. Uh, there's never. There's never. Never say never. I guess right. you may say. No, I'm but, with you. I get it. Uh, I get it. Trust me. Yeah. 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 There's examples where you know. Yeah, they were selling climax. We're going back to test it. The market just keeps going up. So I'm not betting on it, but I'm not. Uh, getting out of my long position either. If it does happen, fine. If it doesn't happen, I think either way we go up. Uh, so anyhow, I'm thinking if it's, if we're going to test the selling climax, it's probably going to be this week. Okay. The reason why is uh, this is the week before option expiration week, and the week before option expiration week, if you're going to have a whipsaw in the market, that's usually a setup to do it. So, and next week, I think 73% of the time, February option expiration week is up. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, no, that'll be a nice uh, setup. I can see it. You try to shake people out. You get down there, you buy a bunch of options. Yeah, no, it's kind of interesting. It's real interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah it could set up. It, it may not, but it's a possibility. But either way, I still think we'd go higher. So let's flip to chart two. I think we, okay. we talked about this chart in the past. This is the reason why I'm kind of sticking to my guns, I guess, to stay long. I'm not yes. really... You know, there's some divergence around, but is, if panic is, is kind of a, a trump card. Yep. If you got panic, usually that kind of trumps a lot of different type indicators. And uh, the bottom window is a 10-day average, and that comes in 109, a little bit below, ideally, like see above 120, but it's only a two-week period. Next higher one's a 21-day, which is a month. And anything above 1.2 is bullish. We got 1.24. And the next one higher is um, a quarter, three months, and anything above one point one is bullish. We got one point one three, so in, in general, it looks pretty good. Um, so normally you don't get big declines. I mean, you can, but normally, you, uh, especially this time of year too, you don't. Yeah, yes. It's not like September, October, November. You get some weird stuff kind of happen. Uh, so, but. This looks pretty good on an immediate term basis. Um, you know, if we were down, uh, especially on the on the six three day trend, we were down round one, which is all that pink shaded area and those pink lines. You get down there, it can get dangerous, uh, and we're a long ways from that. So I'm I'm thinking if there's going to be a pullback here, it's probably going to be minor. Uh, you probably, I bet anything, if you start pulling back, that trend's going to go right up. I want right. to wait and see if that happens or not, if indeed we do pull back. but Yeah, well, you know, yesterday, Tim, I mean, you know, you saw 
we had light volume. I mean, that S&P, as well as the NASDAQ, that rejected lower price, man. And the volume contracted in a monster way, man. It was like, okay, where are these sellers, man? I mean, you know, I mean, the, SM, yeah. you know, the, the SPY went to, what, uh, 490 yesterday, but ended up closing at, you know, 49250. And the volume contracted in a monster way. So it's kind of, it's, it's yeah, like, it okay, man. It was like, I mean, I'm eyeballing here. It looks like at least 20% contraction. Yes. But if you also notice yesterday, we didn't touch a high or a low. It was an inside day. Right. Yes. And uh, so you got now, uh, you know, if we if we touch yesterday's high on a lighter volume, that'd be a bearish sign. If we touch yesterday's low, it'd be kind of a, on a lighter volume, be a, a bullish sign. We're neat, we didn't either. And today, I think, uh, I don't know if we could touch yesterday's high or not, but um, this is kind of a, you know, this is kind of a quiet before the storm. Yeah. You know, it gets this quiet, you know, now all of a sudden some news article comes out and and everybody's screaming again. Sure. But, uh, so I don't know. You got a lot of, I know, I know. But if you all actually go back to yesterday again, if you look, uh, I didn't forgot to point it, go chart one again. Okay. If you notice, we're kind of unchanged for the day. We're up. You know, we're up just a smidge, barely up. But if you notice, the uh, VIX is down a smidge um, as, as we're even we're talking now. And that's usually kind of a, a, a bullish sign. So maybe they'll oh, yeah. test. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, look at the, the VIX Monday is down 36 ticks. And we're out here. Yeah. And not only that. Yeah, it's interesting. Not only that, but actually, when you take a look at this VIX, actually, you're going to see. Now, oh, look at this. Now, this gets interesting, Tim, because you know what's going on. I mean, I'm really like dissect this a bit but what really has happened if you take the vix going all the way back to that last low and yeah. then you put a trend line up and it broke that trend line man <laughs> it, yeah 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 so it it, could, that's but, but in general you know, yeah it's been kind of actually rising going up with the market i was i was looking at that that too i'm thinking eh, not ideal but you know, really speaking, it's still staying way below seventeen. Oh yeah. You know, we're oh yeah. The, now, 13, my my 14, point is that it looks like this thing's and, going back uh, to twelve right now, like twelve forty one or something, man. Yeah, we're thirteen thirty one, right? Yeah. So you know that usually VIX starts going up before we actually see the top. So you know it could be a minor pullback here, but you know we'll flip back to ch chart two again. I don't okay. think yep. on a bigger time frame we're not looking at really anything dangerous here at least not at the moment um we can go to chart three okay we're almost running out of time here I that's see. all right let's just but, see where uh, we're at okay yeah we got it we got 20 seconds yeah let's do it let's do something yeah all right but yeah we, we presented this before this is kind of a i i said back in january we're probably in the trending market and yes. this is one of the reasons why I'm saying that is because the, the RSI on the daily SPY did get up around 80, and it's pretty rare for that to happen. Okay, uh, stay, keep keep that yeah, thought, yeah. Tim. Keep keep All that right. thought. I'll keep that thought. We're going to be right back, folks. This is Tim Moore. This is Tom O'Brien. We have the Dow Industrials up 59, Nasdaq down 41, S and P's a flat. Tim and I are going to be coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Oye, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials trading up 52. NASDAQ down 38. S&Ps are up one. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Wood, and I have the RSI chart up right now, Tim. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is kind of a quick review. We said something I think we talked about a little bit last week, but it's just worth repeating, kind of reminder what everything is. But... The RSI 80, if you look on the chart, the chart goes back to, you know, this chart is, what, 2005. So it, it almost goes back 20 years. Yes. And uh, the uh, and the RSI hit 80, one, two, three, four, five, only six times. Okay. So that's, that's what, once every four years or thereabouts or less. So it's pretty uh, pretty rare at my point to get the RSI to 80 on a daily basis. And every time it did, going back, you know, 20 years or close to it, a lot of times it marked the halfway point of the next move up. And so... Uh, That's amazing. It's a rare occurrence. It's something you really shouldn't, you know, uh, actually you should put it in your toolbox because when it does happen, uh, you kind of want to pay attention to it. So we're probably... Uh, that's another reason why we're probably in a trending market. I think in yes. general we probably move higher all the way into... 
maybe summer, July, August. I don't know how this is all going to work out. Uh, you know, I don't see anything deathly bearish here. The VIX is not really rising. The market's kind of dead. It seems to want to just kind of rally. Um, you know, maybe we'll get a little shakeout this week. Other than that, you know, I, I think this year is going to be another double-digit year as far as returns to the upside. And I bet we, we you know, come close to 20% again. Plus, this is a... Um, a election year. Yes. Uh, even though, uh, you know, the, the, the being, uh, you know, the beings in power are not letting this market, you know, the tank, because that's politically not good for them. So, no, for sure. Uh, and, you know, when Tim's talking to trending market folks, okay, something that you can wrap your head around, and, and, and I'm glad we're talking about it now, because I believe you're, you know, your assessment of, of especially how this RSI is, uh, Tim, because if you're watching, remember, folks, if you're in your car right now and you're not watching, don't, I do not want you, want you watching it on your screen when you're, you're driving, okay? <laughs> remember, it's archived, okay? Because what you're going to be able to see here also is this. You're going to be able to see that when the times that this RSI was at 80, and Tim is talking about the aspect of that it's the halfway move, you're going to actually be able to see that because he has the spy underneath it. And that being said, what happens with trending markets, folks, is that, you know, you, you trend, 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 you go sideways. You trend, 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 you go sideways. And every single time, they won't let you in. That, that's the hardest part about a trending market, trust me. Even though, you know, we'll be going sideways lately, you know, the, the bull's like, oh, no, is it going to pull back? The bears are saying, oh, no, no, it's going to go lower. Anyway, I just wanted to get that out. So it's... Yeah, it's, that's a good point. Matter of fact, I took myself out of trades, really good trades, and uh, then I kind of waited for, you know, a pullback or some opportunity. And they really, they don't let you in. They don't let you, you in, man. I know. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, so once you, so I'm kind of sticking to this trade, you know, may, yeah. may be wrong on it, but uh, I, mean, I don't think I am. So I'm kind of looking at the worst case scenario. We may taste, test last Wednesday's low at the worst case scenario. But other than that, um, you know, in general, I think this market's just going to keep working higher, especially, you know, 73% of the time next week, uh, yep. February expiration week is up. So, I mean, and, we, and, 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 and the rate, rate cycle's going the position. Yeah, and the rate cycle's going the right way. You know, where the rates have peaked. It's going to be choppy out here, folks, but the rate cycle's going the right way, meaning rates are coming down. Rates come down, dollars down, market's up. Yeah, period. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. So next so anyhow, it looks it looks good. I mean, it's, it's you know when we start getting into you know August, September, October, that's when things really fly around. So that's for sure. Right now, I think if you if you got a position, you know, hold. This is probably where you're going to make you know the most easy money, I guess per se, where you can kind of sit yes. and not have to trade back and forth. Right. So. Uh, um, so anyhow, that's that. So that's why I'm kind of just sitting here. Nothing real. Max going on. Well, that's we how Jesse Livermore said he made the most money sitting with his hands in his pocket, right? <laughs> yep, yep, that's true. You know, you got to know when to sit, I guess. And, <laughs> Which and is really tough to do. Kind of stuff that kind of tilt you, you know, off center, I guess, a little bit. But sometimes you got to just sit through it and you do and uh, and move on. So we can go to chart four here. Okay, I have it up. Yeah, okay, this this is a little bit on a gold market. This thing's gone sideways. You know, actually, we, there was an October low. And we rallied. It came back down, still above the October low. I think there's the, the, the actually the September, October, or actually August, September, October of 2022 was an important low. I guess some quite different monthly indicators saying that was an important low. So, in my opinion, I don't think we're going to break the, that low of 2022. Um, so even though we're close to it, I don't think we're actually going to touch it. Yes. And I think the October low of 2023 is important low. I don't think we're going to break that either. Um, but, but the chart we got on chart four here, I think, yeah, this is a weekly. Yes. Uh, yeah, okay, it's a weekly inflation deflation ratio. And there's a couple, two things going on with this chart. Um Anyhow, the RSI is for the weekly inflation deflation ratio. When it gets down around 30, it's, it's, it's usually a bottom. When it gets around above 70, it's usually a top. And back in October, we had a, 
it got down below 30, turned up, had, had a little rally. Now we're back down close to 30 again. And I put the Bollinger Bands on this ratio. And every time you get above or below the Bollinger Band, that's two standard deviations from the norm. And the norm is the mid-Bollinger Band. Okay. So the market has moved too fast, too quick, one direction. And now we're, we've been actually below the lower Bollinger Band for about a week now. Uh, the, the current uh, the current price on the inflation deflation ratio is 0.15, and the lower Bollinger Band is 0.17 minus 0.17. So I actually, see. It, even though it looked like right on it, we're actually just a little bit below it. The last time we got below it was the October low. That's pointed off to the right hand chart kind of blows up on the right hand chart there it kind of shows where it is yes so so you got the rsi pretty much where you need to be you're below the bollinger band so the market on inflation deflation ratio is stretched too much in one direction so it's kind of like a rubber band stretch right now you know are we going up a lot no but there's probably a low in this vicinity right here okay you know is this the low that turns everything up when you scream up for the next uh, thousand years you know probably not <laughs> but if you look over the last 12 months we've we've done squat in gdx right. and xau right especially you know since october we you know we started a rally we come back down we don't you know we get oversold levels rallies a little bit well the longer that the move sideways the longer the impulse wave once it starts so I'm thinking we're building a lot of energy on the bigger time frames here. Will it go sideways for another month? Eh, maybe. Uh, don't know. But uh, I know we're going to start hearing music again. That's all right. Uh, you stay right there, folks. We'll, we'll uh, that. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. And we're gonna, the next two shots that Tim's going to do is the GDX. Okay. We have the Dow Industrials right now up 76. NASDAQ's down 15. S&Ps are up 4.5. Don't forget, you can reach Tim at Ord, O-R-D hyphen oracle or rcle dot, dot com stay right there tim and i come right back folks welcome back folks tim wood tom o'brien and tim is going to be going over the gdx okay tim we're cooking right okay these are uh there's two charts left there this is momentum indicator this doesn't really try to pick the tops or the bottoms it just tries to keep in the trade once it goes in you know the direction up or down yes and uh, this is a weekly chart and the bottom window is the advanced decline, cumulative advanced decline with this Bollinger Band. Next one higher is a cumulative up-down volume on a weekly time frame. Gave a sell signal back in quite January of uh, January, and it's down below is mid Bollinger Band. To get the momentum back up, uh, you need both of those indicators closed above the mid Bollinger Band. Okay. And so far, that has not happened. But this is not designed to pick the tops or bottoms. Designed to catch the trend. So right now, according to this momentum indicator, trend's still down. Now slip to chart six. Okay. We have it. Uh, this is the same chart, but it's on a monthly time frame. This is the one that once you get this indicator going in, in, in a direction, either up or down, it usually stays in that direction for months, if not years. It gave a sell signal back in 2021, and the uh, top window is the up-down volume. It's been on a sell signal since then. And it's been on a sell signal uh, on the bottom one, too, since 2021. Both of them got up right smack at the mid-Bollinger Band. You know, in, in 2023, I thought it was going to bust through, and both of them turned back down again. Uh, so, but this is unusually long time. Most of the signals last a year, year and a half. This has been going on for three years now. So the market's due for something other than what it's been doing over the last three years so you know can it go longer yeah uh when will it turn up i don't know but uh, you know we're at another signal for a short-term pop uh, on the indicator now will that turn into the major uh rally we'll have to wait and see so well I listen to it's always out. a pleasure tim you have a great one safe one of course we look forward to speaking to you on thursday all right, love you guys. Love you, man. Okay. Always remember, folks, the bear can claw your heart out, the bull can run you over, and thank God there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night, a safe night, folks. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off 9 a.m.